It's hard to understate the importance of thumbnails when it comes to creating illustrations, creating finished images, working on our process and refining and coming up with the best idea to spend our time on. And what I want to do on this video is just talk about my thoughts on thumbnailing, um, how I feel like that sometimes differs from the way it's sort of taught um, typically. And uh, uh, again, you know, my experience using um, thumbnailing and sketching, you know, from drawing comics to doing professional illustration or, or sort of personal work, right? Um, so let's get into it. Um, let's talk about thumbnailing and sketching. The thumbnail, I think, is super important, right? Um, and I, I don't know whether it's because of my background in sort of comics where you need to plan the page, right? You need to always sort of be sketching for a narrative purpose and coming up with a finished image that didn't start with a sketch is kind of not very valuable because uh, in comics, again, you always need to kind of plan out the action, right? Otherwise, panels don't join up with each other. But I've always liked doing thumbnails. I've always liked sketching. And I think, uh, again, there's lots of things we could, could sort of say about it. And I don't want to talk necessarily about um, composition when it comes uh, to sort of thumbnails here, because I think one of the one of the things that I have found through sort of um, again looking at how different people talk about thumbnailing and, and sort of sketching as it relates to sort of um, yeah as it relates to sort of educating people on illustration is that I do feel like composition and and thumbnail sketching get sort of mixed together. And look, there's an obvious reason for that, right? Because um, when we think about sort of thumbnailing and, you know, how that relates to, um, you know, composition, they're intertwined. But for this, what I want to do is try and separate that out a bit, right? Because I think one of the one of the most important things to understand for me is that really I just think thumbnailing is more about drawing small. And I think it is, um, it's a separate skill. So let's look at that. Um, but firstly, I just want to sort of show you some examples of sort of thumbnailing um, and just the different types and, you know, how that sort of um, can work. So here's a here's a couple of like uh, really, really rough sort of sketches. Again, they're really not for sort of anyone, but you can see how like a couple of these ideas sort of turned into something, right? So, um, you know, uh, this one over here sort of turned into to, to this kind of sketch. Um, that I did again. This was just another one of those sort of quick personal pieces, right? It's basically like figure in repose sitting on a background um, and uh, The other one here if we sort of look at this one, right? This one sort of turned into these this, this um, sort of larger illustration, right? So we sort of had this sketch which is very rough, but it's a basic idea. Okay, so the idea is just like, I kind of going to have a person standing on a giant hand in a lake, right? And I'm like, oh, there's trees here. There's like a lake here. And I sort of was like, yeah, and there'll be these like things sticking out of the ground. And the process is about realizing that and taking it forward. But, you know, um, obviously the, you know, the most important bit is just the beginning, right? Like this is where it starts. This is where the idea starts. Um... And, you know, we sort of go forward and add all these things and that's sort of what we end up with. Now, again, some of this stuff, I think maybe some of this sort of atmosphere was sort of here, um, you know, <laughs> um, at, at the beginning. Um, and I sort of carried that forward and then sort of took it here. But um, the idea, the idea is really important. And I feel like often when people start to do this or you get sort of taught about like, oh, okay, let's, let's do sort of thumbnail sketching or whatever. We, we start immediately talking about composition, right? The idea of sort of, um, you know, oh, we've got to think about black and white composition and, um, you know, all the rules and all of the sort of things that you typically sort of go on, um, and, and, and talk about when it comes to sort of thumbnailing, right? Um, you know, and if we sort of look at that, I can probably bring up a few of those things. All right, so here we go. Just to sort of illustrate the sort of things we're talking about, right? When we when we sort of look at the composition sort of ideas, um, and again, you know, this is something that's covered here. But I, I do think that 
often we sort of think about, okay, this is composition, and we've got all these sort of rules of composition. Again, these are from um, Andrew Loomis's Creative Illustration, and I use these as an example of the typical sort of things that we get taught when it comes to composition and, and picture making, right? Ideas of sort of balance, um, balancing your image, right? Um, sort of basing them on underlying geometric forms, right? Um, you know, having sort of leading lines. Um, and again, he's a big fan of sort of overlapping lines and, and, and areas are the first principle of composition. Um, all of these things, right? And he has a lot of sort of really, really important things to say. And also, uh, you know, again, there are points on uh, tonality and how we kind of organize the, the, the grayscale sort of rough version of this, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and, um, you know, one of the other things we I sort of often look at is, you know, how thumbnails um, often play a really big role in sort of, you know, these amazing illustrations that we see, you know, and you can see someone like Frank Frazetta, again, I often make this point, someone who was sort of famed for like everyone sort of thought he kind of just created these things, you know, whole cloth in three hours, you know, over a night, you know, it would be this sort of fury of creation. And in reality, right, you can see that that was true. But before he started, he had a very, very good understanding and, I, and an idea for what he was doing. And if you, there's a couple of books that you can look at where you can see, um, yeah, he basically plans out most of the major illustrations that he, he did um, and does a, a, a sort of watercolor rough that looks pretty close to what he ends up doing. Um, you know, so again, I, I feel like uh, often the, the educational sort of stuff, like I, I feel like it's it's important, right? And I think we all want to do this and we want to sort of improve our, compo our composition and, and picture making through thumbnails. Um, and, uh, you know, when we sort of get look at the theory of it, it, it talks a lot about sort of composition and compositional rules. Whereas really, I mean, my, my view on this is that, that the idea of sort of thumbnailing and coming up with these ideas is really just more about drawing small, right? So the typical idea is we sort of mix up, um, again, um, all the rules of composition, your rule of thirds, your Fibonacci spirals, all of this stuff. And it kind of gets like, oh, that's sort of what comp that's what sort of thumbnailing is. That's what sort of sketching is. I really think it is just the, the skill of drawing small. And it's a skill you have to build, right? You And, and it's not just built through doing, um, you know, sort of like small drawings, it's, it's where we sort of take the idea of, um, you know, a little thumbnail like this. Again, this is uh, from a comic book from Pinocchio. So you can see we have like a really rough idea here. And you can see there was an even rougher idea underneath this. And I feel like the real thing here is all this is, is just how do we draw small to plan for a larger image, right? How do we spend less time so we can iterate more? Um, and I think often what's happening here is that we're we're just finding a way to draw quickly so we can solve problems, right? That's really all it is. And I and I, and I think it's so important not to get caught up in like, oh, how do I be, how do I become a good thumbnailer, right? How do I become a good sort of rough sketcher? It's like, well, just do a lot of it, but mostly think about how is this rough sketch that I'm doing going to affect the final image? And I think if you do that, all it will all come together. Uh, the idea that kind of you need to think about composition first is kind of true because that's one of the major things we plan, right? And it's very hard to modify composition once you start an image. But in some ways, composition is just a small part of what we do when we come up with an image. And a lot of it is sort of learnt technically, maybe you can do exercises, but should you be thinking of compositional rules as the first thing you do when you go to thumbnail or sketch? Maybe. But I think often other things that happen are we just kind of see images and you just do a little sketch of it. And if you've had enough experience going through the process, right, you can kind of tell whether or not that little sketch you're doing, which is based off the, the sort of image you've got in your head, right, you can kind of tell whether or not that's going to turn out, you know, whether or not that is going to actually do what you need it to do. Um, and so I think a lot of this is sort of less about worrying whether or not you are following all the rules of composition, composition, right? Like, do I have rule of thirds or, you know, do, do I have, is my Fibonacci spiral, you know, spot on? 
Um, you know, like, where should I have the area of focus? You know, do I have a foreground, middle ground, background? It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you need all of that stuff. But I think at, at the core of it, all we're doing when we're thumbnailing is we're just drawing small, quick versions of what is in our head. And we're trying to select um, from those to see whether we can come up with a really, really cool, interesting image, right? That's really all it is. Don't 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 get tricked by all this other stuff. You will do a better job of that the more you understand compositional rules, the more you understand all of those other things. But compositional rules are not what is really in it. Like no, no one cares whether, you know, you've got the compositional rules there or not, right? Like if you have an image and it's done well, people don't really notice. Certainly your your lay person who's just viewing the image, they don't know about compositional rules. They don't care about that. They just want to see something interesting, right? Um, and and so it's like the, the most important thing is you practice turning your imagination and your ideas into sketches and then you practice then turning sketches into finished images. And once you get that going, right, that circular um, situation, you start to get better at imagining things. You get start to get better at refining your sort of small rough sketches. Um, and you just, you know, start to get more confidence building complicated images, right? But this is basically all it is, right? It's just, we iterate, we draw, we draw small in the same way that the next phase would be to draw rough, right? And then we take that and we sort of turn it into again, right? Like the, the, the finished image. And so understanding the connection between the right the, the 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 rough thumbnail, the very sort of simple version, and how that relates to your process and how you can turn that into something more detailed, that's really the key. Um, I would, don't worry too much about you know the, the typical sort of things that people sort of show. Um, certainly, that's not how I approach it. Um, although all of that stuff is obviously super important, right? Um, understanding you know rule of thirds can be super useful um understanding um i'm not so sure about fibonacci spirals i'm like um i'm sort of uh bearish on fibonacci spirals from a compositional uh, I've, I've you know um i i think uh, good Im good images come really just from people with good imagination and, and, and good ability to kind of instinctively put these things together um but um that's the idea right it's just drawing small so let's look at like a couple of things that I think sort of are important, right? Um, and again, our composition is important, but I think there's a couple of other things that are often just as important or more important. And let's think about sort of how I would start, you know, sort of roughing something in, right? The first thing is when we're sort of thinking about, oh, that's a bit wonky. First thing I sort of think about when I'm sort of thumbnailing, uh, and again, a lot of this comes from a narrative background, is just to think about like what needs to be in there. Because a big part of my sort of experience thumbnailing, stop thumbnailing and putting these image to get images together is that I find often some images are going to require a lot of abstract compositional elements to them. And you may need to drink deeply from the well of compositional theory because there's not anything inherently interesting about the images that you're creating, right? So a, a landscape painting would be a great example, right? Where we sort of say, well, you know, I've sort of got a, a landscape and I've got some hills, right? And I've got sort of some trees, and no tree is really, there's no story here. I've just got trees, you know, and so you can just sort of draw some trees and that's boring, right? That's a, that's a rubbish image. Um, there's nothing interesting about it. And so the compositional sort of um, tools then become very important, right? Because then we sort of say like, okay, you know, let, let's make like, you know, one tree be, you know, the hero tree, you know, and then maybe let's sort of mass some of these other sort of, you know, trees together, you know, and get some sort of depth going, right? Um, and, you know, again, then we can think about like, you know, where where's the rule of thirds, you know, because I, I'm not sure where we should be sort of focusing on, you know, and you'd be like, oh, let's focus on here. What can we have over here? Et cetera, et cetera, right? You, you might just sort of naturally, right, start to sort of organize your image and, and sort of think about it like that. I find this is because often, 
there's nothing inherently interesting about environmental paintings, right? They don't have people in them. They're not about things that people can relate to. Um, and that may sound harsh, but that's true, right? People don't care about that stuff. They just care about characters and, and story for the most part. The way we make people care about like environmental paintings or paintings with that don't have sort of people in them um, is to control their eye to say, hey, look at this, right? I know this thing isn't interesting, but I can make it look interesting. And the best painters and the best um, people who are good at sort of, you know, painting um, tumble down barns or just landscape painters, they find a way to make that thing visually amazing, right? And they use all the tools um, and all the compositional tools and all the painting tools and all the lost edges and found edges. And the human will, looks at that and says, wow, that's really interesting because it's just stimulating every visual nerve they have. Um, and that's where you're going to need a lot more of the abstract compositions. In many cases, right, um, what, what's happening, though, when we're actually sort of creating illustrations with, with a narrative purpose is that the narrative purpose has a burden upon the image. And that sort of says, well, the tree can't be the focus of the image, right? Because I, I have like, you know, two people in this image that are, that are doing something, right? And, and that sort of interaction is actually the focus of the image. And the narrative burden of that image defines that A, right, this needs to be sort of the most important part of the image because it's the main narrative push of the image. Nothing else should be sort of bigger on the page or more visually, um, you know, high in the hierarchy, right? And so in this case, right, we sort of might say, well, that's the main action, right? Let's put some sort of foreground stuff in here to frame it, right? So that again, we focus on that and maybe let's put some sort of background stuff along here. Maybe we've got some sort of trees along here, right? But the main focus is still this thing, right? And, and so, again, everything kind of supports the major action. And I feel like, again, especially when we're doing sort of comics or illustration that has a narrative bent with characters in it, this is how it works, is that you don't have the ability to start with an abstract composition because the narrative burden of the image is kind of pushing you around and defining a lot of these decisions before we even get started. And I think it can be a real danger to kind of start too much and think about like, oh, I've got to have this many triangles in the image because I heard somewhere there was a compositional rule that said the more triangles, the better. So let's put triangles, blah, 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 right? All of these rules, they can get in the way um, because in many cases, what we're trying to do is sort of just say, well, this is an interesting idea in and of itself. My job as an illustrator is to illustrate it. Right, and I need to make it as important as I can. But we can't have too many, you know, crazy leading lines or you know, action sort of stuff. If 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 the illustration we're sort of um, illustrating is more static or is more in repose, right? So I think often people um, develop a lot of these tools, and um, those tools are completely counterproductive to um, the hierarchy of narrative that needs to be in in particular images, right? So I think. Um, Start with whatever narrative you have. If you don't have one, realize, oh, I, I'm going to have a narrative image. Um, I'm going to have an image that lacks narrative, so I'm going to have need some really interesting, cool compositional stuff to make this interesting to a viewer. But if, if stuff has people in it and the people are doing stuff, and especially if they're characters that we know, we just look at that. You know, People just look at faces. Um, that's why so many of those things like, you know, TikTok or Instagram, it's just like, you know, people are talking at you and they've got like these faces, right? That's why people like so much of the, you know, Instagram art influencer, you know, like pretty girl face. It's like, cause people just love looking at faces. They'll look at faces all day. People love characters. People don't care about trees. You have to make them interesting. Um, but yeah, a bunch of, you know, boring old people, you know, on a, on a, phone or a social media perhaps i mean people will tune into that all day it doesn't have to be interesting because it's people we look at it um you're, you're programmed to look at people's faces um you're not programmed to look at trees um, or rocks or buildings or whatever so we have to make that stuff interesting um so i think more about sort of uh when i'm starting a composition right we need to ask a few questions and none of them are about composition first it's like what needs to be there Right. 
what needs to be in this image um, and you know what what is the story now the story might be let's draw a really pretty landscape that's fine right but let's define that as the narrative does the narrative have an existing burden does it have a burden that we're going to need to put onto it right every image is different so the other thing that I would sort of think about is like, right, what is the basic one, two, three read, right? One, two. And that just means like, what is most important? And I think we need to just ask these basic things because in many cases, if we're sort of thumbnailing, a really good process that I think is is good to start with is not kind of like, oh, you know, let's let's draw, a, again, like draw a Fibonacci spiral in there and that's where I'm going to put it. Sure, like you can do that. Um, that doesn't work for me personally though, right? Um, if it works for you, like let me know how you use it. You know, I'd be super interested to hear. I know it works for people who are just um, creating abstract landscapes because they're like, well, I don't know where to put stuff. Let's put in a Fibonacci spiral first. And then like, that's where my tree goes, you know, and that's where, you know, the branches will form a, an extra Fibonacci spiral in there. And then, you know, I, I, I divide that up by another, by by the axis of the thing and that's where I put another Fibonacci spiral and that's where my second focus goes it's like um it's that is completely totally useless for most situations where you're creating illustration um because someone's be like, going to be like oh it's about this character doing this thing and therefore they have to be big on the page and are really important and you're like oh well, I can't put in my abstract composition stuff um so just understand that, right? It's horses for courses, right? It's it's whatever you need for the job. Um, and don't expect that sort of stuff to work all the time. Especially for comics where it's kind of like you've got a million little pages and panels and you've got to make them all work in, in inside each other and stuff. Um, so this stuff is useful, but it's not something you want to sort of, you know, bet the farm on, right? Um, so the first thing I think about is, right, like like what is the most important thing and let's make that take up the most amount of space, right? So if I sort of think about, again, it's like there's a character doing something in the image, um, you know, and that's the most important thing, right? So if I sort of say, you know, okay, like I've got a character doing something and, um, you know, number two is like I've got the background, right? And I've sort of got, you know, a house in, in the background uh, and that needs to be there from a narrative sort of perspective and the third thing is, thing is like, uh, you know, maybe it's like a, you know, post-apocalyptic environment, then I'm kind of going to say, well, okay, I, I want the character to be doing the thing and I want that to sort of take up a certain amount of space. The secondary read, right, is the house and the house is going to sort of take up less space, right? And, um, you know, And then I have to sort of tell the story that like, oh, okay, maybe there's like, you know, some environment around there, right? And I need to find a few things that I could show to tell maybe this is a post-apocalyptic environment. But I would start there, right? Start with like what needs to be in the image and let's just rough it in almost again from like an iconographic point of view. And then once we're done that, we can maybe move forward and become a little bit more tricky about it and say like, can I do this without, you know, in a, in a less obvious way while still maintaining the one, two, three read? Often what will happen is we will find like maybe a more interesting way of drawing something. But if we violate the one, two, three read, then the feedback will come back as that doesn't do what we need the illustration to do, right? Um, now, if you're just doing your own personal work, none of this matters, right? You just do whatever looks cool. But I think if you're aiming to work with other people, this is important because often what you find is like the narrative burden of the image. And again, the more complicated, the more elements there are, the more simplistic you're going to have to be in the way that you illustrate it. 
because you know, if we sort of say, oh, you know, I, I want to have the house be like, you know, really big or whatever, you know, you sort of say like, oh, maybe I have, maybe the person's sort of, you know, sitting down here doing their sort of thing. Maybe they're like fixing something, right? You know, and I've got like this giant sort of, you know, like house in the background or whatever, you know, and, um, you know, like whatever's, whatever's going on in this weird fantasy sort of thing <laughs> imagining right and you're kind of like oh yeah well you know i want to do it that way and have this big house and it's like well now the house is bigger than the character and that might be okay but now we have to sort of again put focus on on the character and the other thing is like well if the cat if the house is big i kind of can't see it right because it's sort of like it's either big on frame or it's big off the frame right and you might run into things where like you know the, the house is described and you need to actually sort of draw it right it has a narrative purpose there or you know maybe we run out of space to draw the background or whatever so often like you might have a visually interesting idea but it gets overridden overridden by the basic narrative burden of the image and i think it's better to sort of think about these things first and try and get that stuff clear and then once you sort of get a feel for like what is going to work in the image what is not right how far you can stretch it and again i feel like one of the best ways to do that is just imagine different ideas sketch them out see if it works get back and sort of see like where am i looking or whatever and once you kind of have a good idea of staging right of how you can stage an image and and, and sort of stage the action um then you can go in and say okay can i make this look really interesting right can i increase the abstract um, appeal of this image, you know, for, through lighting or creating dramatic shapes. And can I do that while enhancing the story, right? Um, you know, so can, can we make, right? Can we make the abstract appeal of the image enhance the narrative? That is the question. Because if we can't, then we kind of need to ditch it, right? Because the narrative of the image, I think, is always going to be the most important thing. Um, now, again, other people might be more interested in, in the abstract nature of the image. That's fine. But often what you'll find is those images don't have a high narrative burden. Um, and, and that's fine. Like that, that's sort of good. But I think from a, from a skills perspective and like what we should focus on when we're dealing with thumbnails, I think this is the important thing, right? What needs to be there? What is the story? And what is the basic one, two, three read, right? These things are always going to be very important. And I think I'd first start by just like, again, I, I almost always do this. I'm just like, okay, what am I going to need there? You know? And it's almost like I'm just making the note. I'm like, well, I need, uh, I need a character doing this, right? I need this thing doing that. Like, how can I kind of fit them? You know, how can I fit them on the page? Right? How can I, and these drawings are just like sort of me being like, how big could it be? You know, maybe they could, maybe they could, you know, both be really small on the page, you know? Um, but again, you know, is that gonna, is that gonna enhance the narrative? You know, how, what, what's important here, right? Can, can I sort of work these things together? I think the idea of sort of thinking about narrative, thinking about staging, um, is, is going to be a lot more important than thinking about abstract, um, imagery. And I think the process of sort of doing and coming up with like a good image that kind of does all of those things. Um, is very challenging, right? That's why it's a skill. That's why it's so important. Because, um, you know, the, the, the first skill, if we think about it, um, if we think about this as a skill is, right, draw small. Can you do that? That's challenging. It is challenging to figure out, oh, how do I sketch little people and st still make the action clear or whatever? The second thing, right, is, right, is sort of, you know, tell the story, right, and get the one, two, three read in there, right? So tell the story and, and, and have the major point of the story be the major point of the illustration, right? And three is like, 
you know, create create interesting abstract imagery. And this is how I would sort of think about it, right? Again, it's a small reframe, but I think it, it can be helpful. Um, I think these are all really important skills. Um, and I think the real trick is mixing them up is non-trivial. It, it takes a long time to get to the point where you can sit down there and draw small, maintain the idea of like, okay, I got to tell the story. I got to have the one, two, three read in there. And I've got to create this interesting abstract imagery where, where we do think about, um, you know, drawing on thirds or, um, again, like chiaroscuro, you know, like, are we going to have like harsh shadows and what shapes are they going to create? And where's the eye leading? And do we have enough triangles and diagonals to, you know, enhance the narrative that we need? Um, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Do we have like a good, uh, you know, one, two, three read? Do we have good foreground, middle ground, background? The real task is what we're practicing to do is mix all those things together at the same time, right? It, it's That's why it's tricky. And um, while I think, uh, again, it can be a good exercise to do abstract compositions, if your goal is to actually create narrative compositions that have a narrative burden, which is often going to require um, you know, you to focus on that versus just making it look cool, then I think the skill you want to build is that you want to be sketching and practice thinking about the narrative burden as you sketch, right? Because if you're just thinking like, oh, what looks the coolest and you forget the narrative burden, you're building the wrong muscle, right? You're, you're going to really struggle when it comes to like creating a story at the same time as a cool image. And I think the real challenge and what really amazing artists have figured out how to do is to do both, right? And they figured out how to draw small so they can plan it, right? And I think that's why often we spend a lot of time here and that's why we draw small because if you had to plan this stuff out in a longer, more drawn out way, you wouldn't be able to iterate on your ideas to find that image that kind of hits everything all at once. And this is actually what we're doing when we thumbnail when we're creating those sketches is we're trying to balance all of those things together and come up with one image that does it all right. That has tells the story, has a good one, two, three read, right. Has amazing abstract compositional elements, has foreground, middle ground, background, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, um, that's what I want for you. That's what I'd sort of suggest that you practice. Um, but make sure again, it's a skill practice drawing small, Practice drawing fast, practice drawing simple, so that you can refine your ability to plan an image that has all of those elements working together at the same time. That's where the magic happens. That's what I think people want to see um, from you and from me and from everyone. So anyway, that's it. That's a few thoughts on uh, thumbnailing. Let me know if you, um, you know, if this has been helpful and you, you've sort of, um, you know, learned something from from that sort of uh, reframe. Um, and if you've got any questions or comments or anything you'd like um, sort of clarified, let me know. Other than that, good luck sketching, good luck practicing to draw, draw small, and good luck um, trying to create amazing images that have all of those things in one.